Hey guys, Pastor Jeff Palmer here. Sorry I'm a little late from uh, uh, getting on here. Um, I had some training that uh, uh, went a little bit over tonight, um, and I didn't get off of there until about uh, uh, till about 8.30. Um, but uh, here we are, and uh, we just wanted to come to you tonight and let you know how much we love you, how much we miss seeing everyone, how much we... Uh, uh, we can't wait to get back into our, our services, but, um, you know, uh, the building is not something that, uh, is going to stop us. Um, and, uh, you know, not being in the building is not going to stop us. And, uh, had a conference call about that today. Um, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we are in the process right now of, uh, of planning, debating. We're in the process right now of talking about <clears throat> what we're going to do as far as coming back. But, um, I'm just thankful uh, that you know that uh, we don't have to uh, that we don't have to be in a church building in order to be the church. I'm thankful that uh, uh, that that we can we we can be who we are. We can be the church uh, uh, even without the building. And uh, you know, understanding that um, you know, I I, I am uh, I'm beginning to I'm beginning to see uh, uh, I'm beginning to see the uh, the scripture in in Hebrews chapter ten uh, about um, about how we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. I'm beginning to see that a little differently uh, now, and uh, you know, as you can see, I'm I'm working on uh, tagging some people and and doing some stuff, and uh, but uh, but but you know, I'm I'm looking at Hebrews chapter ten verses uh, you know verse twenty five a little bit differently now, and uh, you know. Understanding that when the writer of Hebrews said, "Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together," we have to understand that in the New Testament, they didn't have the church buildings like we do. They came together in each other's houses. They came together, uh, and actually in in one another's house. And uh, um, one in in some of the books that I've been reading here lately, it's it's interesting because uh, because as you uh, as you begin to understand. And, and think about the New Testament church, uh, they actually have done some, uh, uh, some excavating of, of, a, of a place that was actually, uh, uh, it, it was actually a, a home that, uh, they, that, that the people had remodeled uh, to accommodate the, their growing congregation. And uh, what they did was they, they would come together in their home, and when they outgrew that space, then they would go ahead and remodel their house to where they could fit more people into their house, not into a church, into their house. They, uh, this, this house they found was uh, that, 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 you know, it was obviously a Christian's home, and uh, they actually knocked out a wall and it made the living room area larger. Uh, and was it done with some, uh, uh, with some of the, uh, uh, with, with some inconveniences to them and their family? Yeah, probably. Uh, but they did so for the betterment of Jesus Christ. They did it for the betterment of the church. And uh, and so with you know with all that understanding, you know, you, we, we when you understand all of that, you begin to understand and read what Hebrew, what the writer of Hebrews said in chapter 10, verse 25, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Again, they would come together daily. Uh, and now in this day and time, uh, before all this COVID stuff happened, uh, you know, it, we, it was one of those things to where, uh, uh, to where, well, my, that's my wife. <laughs> That's my wife. Um, uh, we might need to get clearance from the church since we live in the parsonage, but uh, uh, but that that could be something that we think about. Um, but uh, but but you know, as as you look at as you understand what uh, what what was going on in the New Testament, you know, you, you understand that the church was not. It wasn't. It wasn't something that. Um, that, that that they took very lightly. They they met together daily, and before all this COVID stuff happened, you know, it, it was it was difficult to get people to come out on Sunday mornings, much less you know every day of the week. But now that this now that this Corona things happened, now that this COVID things happened, um, I I have to wonder, you know, it, it has our feelings changed about that? Um, 
what would happen if we would if we would start to meet together in each other's houses? What if uh, this changed the way we thought about church and the way we did church, and we began to meet in each other's houses, uh, and 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 then on Sundays come together as one big family? And uh, you know, what if that would happen? Uh, and, and because that's exactly what they did in the New Testament. Uh, you know, I, I, I we like to. We like to think that you know that we're that we're a New Testament church, but when you really look at it, you know it, it, we're not. We don't meet in each other's houses. It's almost like an inconvenience for us to meet in each other's houses now, um, and, and so you know that's just something to think about. You know because this is what the church is supposed to be, and yeah, that's right. And just like the Book of Acts, you know they they went they went daily to each other's houses, and you know the Lord's Supper was not just you know this little this little thin piece of wafer and and a little cup of juice they they actually partook of a full ble- a full fed a full fledged supper uh and because that's what Jesus did with his disciples it was the passover meal that they were actually eating and and this is what they did in the in the new testament so what would happen you know what would happen if if instead of on wednesdays we met in we we broke up and met in the, in, in in people's houses um what would happen if if instead of having one church we were able to have uh, 15 churches meeting at the same time, uh, you know, in, in, in each other's houses. I mean, it, it's something to think about. But, uh, I mean, I, I can't, don't get me wrong. Please don't misunderstand me. Uh, don't misunderstand me. I, uh, I miss meeting in our church building. I miss it. I, I, I miss seeing everyone. But at the same time, you know, it, it, you have to wonder what, what, what how is this going to change? And, you know, that's, that, that's something that, you know, that's, uh, like I said, I, I, I've been, I was interviewed by, um, our local paper. I was given some questions. I was interviewed by our local paper and I don't know if it'll be in the paper or not. I, I submitted my answers. You know, I don't know if it'll be in the paper or not. My wife keeps trying to tell me I'm famous, but I'm really not. I'm just, uh, I'm just pastor Jeff. Um, but uh, but you know it, it's one of those things to where you know do we how how are we going to rethink this how are we going to, you know and it's been it's been the question that's been asked to me and uh, many of the other pastors in the Cornerstone Conference are you going to continue with some of the practices you started during this time uh, what's going to be different and so that you know it's causing us to really to really rethink the way we do stuff and and. You know, I I I, I heard uh, Bill Schwartz talk about this. He's one of our missionaries over in Belgium. If you're watching, Bill, hey man, I love you. I can't wait to have you here. Um, and uh, he, I actually watched the broadcast that he said, and he said this is this is more of a, a time of innovation for the church. It's time of a it's a time of us to be uh, to 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 rethink the way we do things, and and because that believe it or not, there are still going to be be people that will not come into our churches, and over in Belgium, in the Netherlands, in Germany, uh, and in other places around the world, I know that we have what's called coffee ho- coffee house ministries. And over there, you're not allowed to, to, to um, in some of these countries, you're not allowed to meet in churches and, and to and to try to, quote unquote, proselytize people from the different faiths over there. But you can always sit down and have a cup of coffee with them. And so this is something that has been heavy on my heart for several years now. And, uh, and, and I'm wondering if this is something that we may not look at doing and, and we may not, you know, we, we may just sit down and start to sit down and having coffee with people just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So anyway, I, I say all that to say, you know, don't forsake the assemblings of your, of yourself together. Don't, in other words, if you have an opportunity, uh, when all this is over, when all this is said and done to come together with you, whether it's a small group, whether it's, a uh, uh whether it's uh you know hey bill it's good to see you man uh wh- whether it's a small group whether it's uh w- whether it's in your house whether it's at a coffee shop don't forsake that don't don't take it for granted cuz i lord knows i'm not going to take any of it for granted anymore um i i love i love being with god's people but you know god's people uh god is showing me that that, that god's people needs to be out there we all need to be out there we need, we need to be working to minister to people on the outside of the church and uh, uh, coming up with some innovative ways, so uh, just be encouraged. Be encouraged right now. You know, I 
I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe different. You know, uh, the the governor. I know that there's a there's a federal judge that has stepped in here in North Carolina, and and I've actually had somebody come online and say they're from Pennsylvania, Bill. Believe it or not, and they actually tell me that you know because I was I just posted the article online. That's all I did, and and they actually called it irresponsible. This federal judge has stepped in and uh, deemed uh, what Governor Cooper has said about the uh, the churches not being able to come together is unconstitutional, uh, and. And somebody is not, ha you know, somebody online was not happy about it and called it irresponsible. Uh, others are, are celebrating it. You know, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, uh, you know, next week. Uh, you know, we with all of this may change. We may open everything up, and and you know the the the, the COVID cases spike into you know in the quadruple, and, and then we have to shut everything down again. We don't know what's going to happen, but we as the church, we need to be adaptable. The message of Jesus Christ never needs to change. The gospel of Jesus Christ never needs to change. And, and you can ask my church members, I have always said that, my, that, that the message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ will never change coming out of my mouth because everyone needs to be saved. Everyone needs to have that opportunity. But the way we present it, that does need to, that, that does need to adapt. Um, the message doesn't need to change, but we, we, we have to change with the times. And, the, and that is something uh, that I, th I, th I honestly believe that God is doing here in this time, that, uh, that, that, is, that, that he, is, he is forcing the church to adapt. He is forcing the church to adapt to this time and to come up with new ways. And so I just wanted to encourage everybody out there. Uh, I love you guys. Again, I'm sorry for, for, uh, for not being able, being on here before now. Uh, like I said, I had some training that had, we had to do, uh, before we, be, before I was able to come online. Uh, but we, we just want you to know how much we love you. We're still praying for you, and I want to lead you in prayer here in just a few minutes. Uh, if you have a need, go ahead and let us know. Comment below, uh, you know, because we want to pray with you. We don't want to pray just for you. We want to lead you in prayer. We want you to join us as we go into the Lord's presence. So if you, if that's you and you have a need tonight, let us know by commenting below. You can message me. Um, I'm here sitting at my computer. I'm also getting the messages here on my phone. Um, so if that's you, let me know. Just message me. Uh, you can uh, you can also call me. I'll I'll be more than happy to put my phone out my phone number out there. Uh, I'm not, I have ne I've never been shy about that. And maybe uh, you know maybe I might receive criticism for that. I'm unsure. Uh, but you know my phone number's out there. If you need me, call me, text me. I'm here for you uh, because we want to make sure that God's people succeed in this life. And, and if there's anything that I can do, I want to help you. I want to I want to I want to do everything I can to uh, to help you out. So again, if you have a need tonight, let us know by commenting below. Uh, one of our one of our foster kids here in the home asked me to remember him in prayer tonight uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer. Um, he's going through a lot, and uh, you know it, 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 he's he's definitely got some uh, some so, some some things going on, and and he, we we love the little guy, but uh, you know he is uh, he is definitely somebody that's on our mind, um, and we do want to pray for him and and and. Uh, remember him. But if you have a need tonight, let us know. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. I don't want to keep you long. I know it's late. I know you got stuff to do, bed to, bed to get to, work to maybe to go to in the morning or whatever. So I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, but we do just, we, you know, we just want to lead you in prayer. Again, if you have a need, just go ahead and comment below. I'll try to catch it uh, at, 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 as we go to the Lord in prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, and I hope you, I hope you found this word encouraging uh, because that's all we want to do is we want to encourage everyone out there. It, it, th things are going to be okay. The Lord's going to see us all through this. I promise you, uh, according to what this word says, he's going to see us through this. Um, but uh, we just want you to be encouraged. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now, and let's just believe God's going to meet the needs out there. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. We magnify you and we lift you up because, Lord, you are awesome. You are great. You are mighty. You are powerful. Lord, we just thank you right now. We just give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for being, for, for being everything that you are to us. 
And Lord, right now, we just, we come to you. We come to you with a humble heart. We come to you, uh, with, 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 with this, uh, with, with a spirit of humility as we enter into your presence and, and we just realize and recognize how great you are, how wonderful you are. Um, and you can even say that, uh, you can see my shirt, uh, it says hashtag God is greater, which means that God is greater than anything that we face. And, and Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the fact that you are greater than anything than anything that we can imagine. You are greater than anything on this earth. You are greater than anything in the heavens. You are greater than anything below the earth. You are greater than anything at, at the far reaches of the universe. All the majesty and all the glory that's out there, you created all of that. And so, Lord, we thank you for that right now. And we just give you glory for what you've done and how you reveal yourself to us every single day. Day, Lord, you don't have to reveal yourself to us, but you choose to do that every day just by waking us up, just by the fact that when we open our eyes, we know that you have done so. We know that you are the one that have get, that has given us life, and we thank you for that. We thank you for this day that you have allowed us to live, and Lord, we just we, we glorify you because we made it. We made it through another day here on the eastern, here on the east coast of the United States. We made it through another day. Maybe you're in another country and you're just starting the day. Maybe you're in another country and you're just coming up on midday. Uh, maybe you're somewhere else around the world. But no matter what, God has given you this day, and that is enough to thank Him for. And He, if if you are above ground and you have breath in your lungs, you've got life in your body. That is enough right there to give God glory and to give God honor for. That's all you need. And, and, and if, if nothing else, if nothing else, we have the blood of Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, he did it for us. And that is enough to thank him for as well. So, Lord, we do thank you for that right now. We thank you that you gave your life. We thank you that you took the stripes on our back so that we could be healed. We thank you for that you suffered. You were punished. You, you, you suffered that punishment that we deserve. And, Lord, we thank you for that right now. And, Father, we come to you. Before we go to bed tonight, we come to you and we ask that you would search our hearts, that you would see deep down inside of us, know us, Lord, if there is anything, anything at all that has offended you today, if there is anything at all that, that is considered sinful, if there is anything that we have done wrong, any words that have come out of our mouth, any attitudes that we have had, if there is anything at all that has been unpleasing to you, Lord, please reveal that to us right now so that we can get that placed under the blood of Jesus and so that we can be forgiven given of that. Lord, we just ask and pray that you would cleanse us of our unrighteousness because Isaiah tells us that our, that, that our righteousness is as filthy rags before you. And so cleanse us from our unrighteousness right now. Make us whole so that we can come into your presence and so that we know that when we come into your presence, we can be heard. You will hear our requests. Lord, we just ask and pray that you would let the blood of Jesus cover us right now. Father, we do come to you right now, and we ask and pray that, Lord, you would work and that you would move. Lord, that you would hear our petitions, hear our petitions right now. Father, we come to you and we pray for those that are affected by the virus. We pray for those that, that for, we pray for the virus itself, that this thing would just come to a stop, that this thing would, thing would come to an end, that you would let your mighty hand be seen moving on behalf of your people right now and just bring this thing to an end. Lord, I know that, God, you can do it. I believe it. I, I completely completely believe that it is, it is within your power. And so, Lord, we are asking as a people, as your people right now, as your people, we are asking that this day you would bring this virus to a stop and that everyone that has been affected by it, you would heal them right now in Jesus' name. You would let them know that your power is touching them. The healing power that comes from Jesus Christ is coursing through their body right now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. If they, if they are afflicted by this virus, let them know that they are being touched by you. If they need some other kind of healing, let them know that you are laying your hand on them and you are doing a mighty work in their body right now if they need another another type of healing whether it's from cancer whether it's from injuries whether it's from 
whether it's from diabetes, from asthma, from, 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 from just a normal headache all the way up to some of the worst things that we can imagine. Lord, if they need a healing touch in their body, do it right now in Jesus' name. Heal them, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I look to you right now, and I ask and pray that, God, you would do a mighty work. Lord, you know the needs that's on our list. You know the people, the individuals that, that are on our list, that's in our book. Lord, you know the individuals that are there. You know the heartbreaking situation situations they're facing. You know what's going on with some of their lives. You know you know exactly where they are. And Father, that is what I love about you. Even though we are 7 billion people strong and we are all individuals, you know us. You know every one of these 7 billion people on the face of this earth. And I thank you for that. And I ask and pray right now that, God, you would minister to every need that's on our list, anyone that's watching by, by, by Facebook, anyone that will watch it in the future, anyone that's out there, Lord, that is under the sound of my voice right now. Lord, I just ask and pray that you would touch them, meet them at their point of need. You know what's going on within every single individual. And, Lord, I just ask and pray that you would help every person that's out there be with them right now and just, just let them see your hand moving in their situation. Father, I just ask and pray whether whether they're going through a divorce, whether they're going through financial ruin, whether they are whether they are facing some of the some of the worst spiritual conditions they've ever faced, whether they are under attack from Satan himself. Lord, whatever it is that they are facing right now, meet them at their point of need and just touch them right now. Lord, I'm believing that God you are going to move. You know every name that's listed in that book. You know every Every person that is listed there, you know the physical needs, the financial needs, the emotional needs, the spiritual needs. You know what's going on within the physical needs of everyone that's listed in our book. And I ask and pray that, God, you would heal them, touch them, minister to them in whatever way they need, Father, right now at this moment in time. Lord, we look to you as well, and we ask and pray that, God, you would help, that, 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 Lord, you would help all the churches out there that are struggling through this, that are navigating their way through this, Lord. I know that God right now you have you have done just a, you you continue to blow my mind with what you're doing to your church and 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 with what we, and with how the church is still flourishing and how the churches are still prospering and Lord I ask and pray right now that you would touch every pastor every leader that's out there that is trying to navigate their way through this Lord, I just ask and pray that you would give us all wisdom, that, Father, you would help us. It's a case-by-case -case thing. It's a case, the, the, No church is going to be the same. No church is going to open up the same. And so I pray for the leaders, the pastors, those that are in leadership positions of these churches, that you would help them, give them wisdom, give them guidance, give them direction on exactly what they need to do as they open the churches back up again. Father, give us all wisdom as far as that goes and help us us make the right decisions. We pray for protection on our congregations. We pray for protection on your people, whether they're in the United States or whether they're in the other countries around the world, from Ghana, from Australia to the Philippines to Russia to uh, Nigeria to to uh, to to South Korea, North Korea, wherever they are, Father, I ask and pray that you would help every body of believers. Lord, I just ask and pray that you would help each individual, the ch the Christian community in every country that's out there. Lord, I ask and pray that you would help every one of them out there. Be with them, protect them, provide for them, watch over them. Lord, I just ask and pray that you would be with them and just 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 let them let them understand your power again let them understand how awesome you are let them see you for who you are and then help your church be ready for those that are that, that, that don't know you those that don't look like us don't talk like us those that don't don't smell like us those that don't Act like us, those that don't look like, Father, whatever it is, Lord, help us to be ready to receive them in Jesus' name, just as they are. Because, Lord, we will receive that same way. Help us to remember that. Help us to remember the condition that we were in when you found us, and help us to receive them just as they are. Father, we pray for our leader the leader of the United States, the president of the United States, the vice president. We pray for 
every member of Congress. We pray for every member of the cabinet. We pray for every member that is in leadership here in this country. We pray for the leadership in the countries around the world. Lord, we ask and pray that you would give them spiritual wisdom, that you would give them guidance, that you would give them direction as far as what they need to do with this pandemic that we're facing right now. I just ask and pray that you would help them seek your face, help them turn to you, help them seek your guidance and your wisdom, Father. And when they do, when they turn their hearts to you, meet them, meet them right there, answer their requests, give them that supernatural wisdom in order to guide the countries of this world through this pandemic. Lord, I pray right now for all of our lost loved ones, for the lost loved ones that are connected to me, for the lost loved ones that are connected to my wife, for the lost loved ones that are connected to every person that's watching, that has watched, and that will watch. Lord, I ask and pray that you would touch them, that, Lord, you would send your spirit to them, convict them right now, and bring them into a relationship with you. Bring them into a saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ right now. Father, I just ask and pray that you would save them. Lord, let them turn to you during this time. Let them turn to you right now in Jesus name father I just ask and pray that you would let them let them know you once again let them let them come to know you for who you are father I just ask and pray that you would let them know that they don't have to fix anything they don't have to do anything they don't have all they all they have to do is just take that first step towards you and you will meet them the rest of the way and you will receive them just as they are all they have to do is ask for you to come inside their heart and to live inside their life, to 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 forgive them of their sins. That is what that that's all they have to do. Let them know that, and then you'll take care of the rest after that. They don't have to worry about getting stuff straightened out and cleaned up and, and all that kind of stuff. Lord, just let them know that that you are there and you want to be in a relationship with them. Father, I pray right now. I pray right now that God you would just Send your spirit to them, convict them, draw them into your presence, and help us as your people to never, ever, ever give up praying for those that we love, that are not in a right relationship with you. Help us to never give up on them. In Jesus' name, we thank you, we give you glory, we give you honor, because you are the only one worthy. God, you are awesome. Jesus, you are awesome. Holy Spirit, you are incredible. And we love you, and we just ask and pray that you would be with us tonight. Lord, let everyone out there have a good night's sleep. Protect them from the enemy that would want to steal them away. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys coming on and praying with us. Remember to check on each other. Remember to pray for each other. Remember to lift each other up. Remember to edify one another. Not just not just your fellow church members, but check on your neighbors. Check on your family. Check on those you love and, and care about, okay? So just remember to to to, uh, to check on each other. Uh, remember tomorrow, like I said, I, I, I've stopped promising what time I'm going to be on here. I normally try to start to, to, start to be on here about 6 o'clock, but I just... Uh, I've given up on that. My life has turned upside down, and, I, and and when I'm on here, just be paying attention and watch for when we're on here because I will be on at some point tomorrow. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Uh, we're praying for you. If you need anything, you have my number. I mentioned it in the comments. Please let me know if you if there's any way that I can help you. Remember, tomorrow we we are serving a spaghetti dinner. It's going to be a great spaghetti dinner here at East Marion Pentecostal Holiness. If you live in the Marion area, come on by and get you some spaghetti. There is no cost to you. If you're hungry tomorrow, come on by. We want to feed you. So God bless you guys. We will see you tomorrow. Uh, and again, if you live in the Marion area, come on by from seven to nine o'clock in the evening. We will be serving a spaghetti dinner. So God bless you guys. We love you. We're praying for you.